Crisis in petrol stations across the country may not be over anytime soon, as Nigerians may still need to endure the petrol scarcity. But this is as the Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited confirmed it is owing petrol suppliers a significant debt. According to a statement by the Chief Corporate Communications Officer of NNPC Limited, Olufe Mishonaye, the debt is threatening fuel supply sustainability. Although the statement did not state the amount, Mr. Shunaya said the financial strain has placed considerable pressure on the company. He adds that the NNPCL is collaborating with relevant key players to maintain frequent supply of petroleum products. Meanwhile, Nigerians are calling for a complete overhaul of the Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited. Abimbola Agbebi was out in Lagos State to monitor the situation. It is no surprise that top on the list of stories making headlines on the front pages of newspapers in Nigeria is fuel scarcity. There is no doubt and not interesting times for Nigerians as many still spend the night at fuel stations just to get the product. Through this morning now, I've been here until 2 o'clock to this time now. You can see me, you can see me. so tired. A trip around town showed that some fuel stations, though open, had no activity, while fuel scene dispensing had long queues. It was not a pleasant weekend for these motorists having spent hours on the queue. There were allegations that fuel was only sold into jerrycans, but at a high price. Since 12 o'clock, I don't have a queue, I a queue. No, they the said cake, cake. rubber. Cake, <coughs> motor. I went to buy fuel of 13K. They collected 2,000 from me before they will sell me and I'm have to buy 11,000. Now those were allegations made by motorists here as fuel scarcity in the country bites harder. But at the sight of a camera lens, the story changed as fuel attendants stopped dispensing. Reacting to the situation, Nigerian economist Muda Yusuf has called on NNPC Limited to speak to Nigerians as fuel prices soar. Apart from the productivity issues, it has affected cost of transportation cost of movement, for, especially for the ordinary people. But as far as the PMS is concerned, NNPC is the sole importer of these products. So when we are having this kind of crisis, I expect the NNPC to come out and explain to Nigerians what exactly is the problem. On Sunday, the 1st of September, NNPCL finally admitted a significant debt to petrol suppliers, a story that has sparked reactions. How did this debt come about? That's the question. Is this, debt, is this something that has been from the previous government or something that just came? If you are to buy fuel for maybe 1,000 half a liter, how much are you going to charge customers? So they are sitting on the money, they have to pay. And the president, Bola Tinubu, must overhaul an NPC. Overhaul an NPC, sack everybody. As it stands, some say walking into fuel stations to get fuel at an affordable price may now be a luxury. Every Nigerian earnestly yearns for. Abimbola Agnibi, CBC News, Lagos. For more on this development, economist and policy analyst Sahid Ajadi joins me via Zoom from Lagos. Mr. Ajadi, it's good to have you join us on the program. You know, Very much yes, uh, for long, uh, Nigerians have wondered why fuel queues have been persistent with many stations not selling. Uh, the few that are selling only dispense from you know, a few of their pumps. Uh, but now the NNPC Limited has come out to speak. It's clear the air. Uh, what's your take about their position and how long it actually took them to make this revelation? Yeah, good evening, Nigeria. It's appalling to see what is happening. I bought fuel at 9.50 today and I was shocked my wits because it was dispensed from the pump. Um, NNPC, we thought, had uh, moved from the government own totally to privatization a little towards uh, development. But from what we see now, there's been in so much inconsistency. In the last two weeks, we were told that they are making profit and that um, they are willing to give the dividend to Nigerians to ease the subsidy. But we're hearing now today that uh, they're owing the back end. Niger Nigeria relies solely on NMBC to bring in product. But NMBC subcontracts this 
product importation to their back end suppliers. However, we are shocked at the understanding now that there is a lot of deficit because Nigerians are paying as that when due for product at the, at the dispensing tax. NNPC has outlets and all of them receive money for products being sold. So there's no reason why the back end should be complaining of not being paid. And NNPC is now telling us that they're owing. It's an aberration, it doesn't, it doesn't fit. And you see, when you look at the NNPC, what we are expecting now is that now that they have become limited, we should go to the stock exchange. That is the only way we can see accountability from NMPC. The crop of people that are working in NMPC now, they need to be expunged. You need fresh and grey horns to be able to channel the agenda of the new administration and make it work. The crop of people there are from the past, and the past did not work for us, so we need to depart totally from the past and focus on the future. Now we are talking about refining. We should have specifics from NMPC telling us by September, there has to be product being supplied from the refineries. You have bought all the equipment. Give us a spe specific time and actualize. Where is in charge and is not making it happen has to go. There is no sentiment over 200 million people. We have to face the reality. The queues over the weekend was arbitrary. Now it is astronomous today. You cannot imagine kilometers of queue, and at the end of the day, there's no dispensation. You will find out that petrol, petroleum stations have products. What is causing the queue? That means there's diversion. We are complaining now, we are seeing products being sold in the Republic and all of that, even with the devaluation of the diet. So it means that Nigeria is very strategic to his, to his, to his um, neighbors. What do we do to solve this problem? Build more refined. Out. They are modular in Mr. Families. Daddy, you know, we'll talk about the solutions. We'll get to dwell on that. But the point you made about overhauling the system, you know, maybe sacking those who are in charge, but is it not really about the system? I mean, it's, a, it's the system and it's a specialized field such that even if you choose to relieve the people who are currently occupying the position of their roles now, you still need to bring in people who are well-versed in the system and it might just boil yeah. down to same people who have been at the helm of affairs. There are, there are people responsible for making things work. In normal crime, you're being paid for a service to be rendered. If at the time, the service is supposed to be delivered and there is no cogent reason for you not delivering the service, you're supposed to be suspended or fired. Now, in a system, there are people called subordinates or assistants that can take over systems six months when there's an emergency. That is why you call it a system. You need to train and retrain. So if an, a GMD, for instance, is not doing the right thing, the assistant GMD should be able to take over the seat and function because he has been observing the GMD for a while. So we cannot say because someone has failed and he has to be penalized or, sent or, or suspended, the whole system must, must stop. I Let me start, Judge. You see, we, hold on. We have, to, we have to see the reality of where we stand. We have managed NMPC for such a long time, and we have seen their failures. This is not today. What well, Mr. Jadi would... Yes, I will take it from there. We'll take it from there in a moment. You know, the NNPC have released quite a number of statements in recent time, and some of which uh, content would also dwell on when we return from the break, and that's including uh, the move towards privatization of some of our refineries, talking about the one in Wari and... Uh, in Kiduna here in Nigeria. But uh, that will be after this break. So let's take a moment. When we come back, the conversation continues. Voted as the best TV station of the year. TVC News breaks into the core of every event as they happen. Following all nationwide big and impactful stories. Without the news from every perspective. Covering every human angle. I am Veronica bringing you the news you would want to watch.
Welcome back to the program. We are talking about the long queues at fuel stations and the recent statement by the NNPC Limited of Owen uh, International Oil Supplier significant debt. Our guest, an economist and policy analyst, Sahid Ajadi, is still with us. Mr. Ajadi, the NNPC recently announced it recorded a profit of 3.3 uh, trillion naira in the year ending 2023. Uh, so. You know, as a result of that, people really have been wondering how come the company is owing, you know, having declared that amount of profit, which is about 700 billion hour increase from previous years. Uh, what do you think? I'm an accountant too, and I feel that that's an inconsistency in the yeah, email and the general statement of the, of the organization. So I think an external auditor is auditing them. If you are saying to us you win profit, two weeks ago. That's why I said earlier in my starting statement. And you now come around and say you are owing. It doesn't add up in accounting. Something is wrong. So they need to be audited. And whoever is responsible for this mix-up must be punished or told to be suspended. Someone has to take over. You see, Nigeria is too important. NMB is, is a strategic asset. And so when we are talking about becoming a limited liability, there has to be accountability. There is no accountability. That's why we are seeing what is happening right now. If they said to us there is a profit, that means that they have done an audit statement and an auditor has checked their balance sheet and all of that. But for them to now come around and say they are owing the back end, where is the profitability? That is not right. And so that means that you are contradicting yourselves and proving to us that you are not competent to handle a limited company. And I suggested earlier, I said if we are going to, if we are going to run an NBC company, it has to go onto the stock exchange. They have to, they have to go, we have to value their assets, people have to invest in them, and they will state to Nigerians. 40% is supposed to be core investment for Nigeria. So even if you want to privatize an NBC, you have to think of the Nigerian bit and the strategic asset. We need to be interested in NMPs now because the, vibe, the vibes and the information we are getting from them, including their, their, their telecoms, the, the media executive, is not right. We are confusing the, the executive by saying you have profit today and now you are owing. Why are you owing when you are profitable? It doesn't make sense in accounting. You are indirectly saying you are going bankrupt. Mm. Because if you are not being able to meet your needs, your needs is to supply, firstly, PMS to Nigerians. Um, diesel has been uh, privatized and deregulated, although it fluctuates as well, seriously. So profitability is very scary. But the PMS must be able to be constant. I hear now you, Mr. Jade. I hear you. And you know, this issue wouldn't you know, be, have been at the front burner if it hadn't been for the queues that we've been experiencing at different stations, fuel stations across the country. And uh, the NNPC is now talking about plans for privatization. It is looking at privatizing the uh, refinery in Wari and the one in Kiduna. How do you see this? Because I know before now, there are some people who have yeah, actually canvassed for that. Do you think it should go ahead with it? Well, we've done this before under the previous administration and it was... Uh, first back with another administration. My concern is that if, if you want to privatize the refineries, there has to be accountability still. Nigeria has spent so much money on this turnaround maintenance for four different regimes. Who is accountable to us? How much have we spent and who is responsible for the contract? Those must be gotten right first. If you want to sell or privatize an NBC, there has to be some form of functionality. Okay, 60% functionality, 40% functionality. There has to be a startup. We cannot continue to rely on private hands for this kind. Okay, think for instance, we have done what now. That is a strategic partner to the country now because it's producing a large volume. If Potakot and Wari can come on stream, it means that Nigeria has security for energy. If something happens to the private hands, for instance, one day, and they are not functioning well, or there's a, there's a force majeure, they cannot get supply of food oil or anything, what happens to Nigeria? We have to be careful. We have to be careful. Take, for instance, Aramco of Saudi Arabia. They privatized. It doesn't mean that the government still does not have the hold. That's why I said to you that you cannot say, because I have a headache as a country, you cut off the head. There's no more country. So we have to be careful. 
What kind of privatization do we want from NNPC? Are we going to give the private sector total control of a strategic thing like oil? I don't think it's right. I think we have to still hold on control. Even with the situation we have now, NNPC bringing in the product, controlling the supply, you still have marketers selling beyond at whatever price they do. I bought at 950 today. So and even there's no control. Yes, Mr. Dad, even about that, uh, what's your take? Uh, should NMPC Limited actually be the sole, uh, you know, the sole company saddled with the responsibility of bringing in this imported product? There's nothing wrong with that. If we have NMPC doing the right thing, Saudi Aramco does that. In Dubai, they do that. There's so many countries, for example, that has this under control. What we are saying is that the people saddled with the responsibility, are they doing the right thing? Why would you wait for Nigerians to suffer for two weeks when you said to us you have made profits? You now turn around and say you are owing, that is why there is a scarcity. There has to be a penalty for that. It doesn't make sense. This is not your company. It is for everybody. And so you cannot come out and just be opening your mouth and say that things as you like. There has to be some structure. If the GMD is there and some people are saddled with responsibility under him, let him show us that he's in control. But if he's there and they're saying arbitrary statements to the country and he's there, he's proving that he's not competent. So he has to come out and prove that, yes, this is the situation. We're sorry, blah, 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 blah. We give us a time frame for making amends. If that time frame is not met, then you put in your resignation and man, sit down. Enough of that. So mediocrity has to stop. Nigeria mm -hmm. must run perfectly based on people being held responsible for their tasks. I hear you, Mr. Ajadi. The GMP is telling us. I, I hear you, yes. Earlier, you, you made a reference to Dangote refinery. And, uh, you know, yes. there's a lot of hope that, okay, when this refinery comes on board, uh, we're going to have energy security. That, that was like the main belief back then. How much influence, how much impact do you see it's coming on board actually have? Would we find that's, an end to this, to this queues? With 650,000 six, six metric tons per day, that's huge. Supply. So, and supply, if it's more than demand, will bring down price. So, Nigeria's context now, if Dangote comes on stream, we're expecting lower prices. And if Potapot and Wari comes on stream, we are expecting far lower prices. That means that we are not relying solely on Dangote. I keep saying this. You cannot, as a country, rely on one individual. Except we are, buying, we are going to buy into his refinery. We must be careful. If, for instance, there is an, a force majeure, I keep saying this, how do we function as a nation? Now we are held to ransom because NNPC is owing importers. So if we are now owing Dangote, for instance, and he says, okay, you have reached the limit, you cannot supply you anymore, what happens to Nigeria? So we still need to get our acts together with our refineries. I don't believe in failure. I believe in getting things done. So if you have told those refineries must work by August, you have given an extension of another month. By the end of the month, whoever is responsible for it has to be sacked or penalized. Don't give us statements anymore. If you are not capable, it doesn't make sense. 200 million people, and you tell me there's nobody that can take position if they are, if they are being relieved of their duty? I don't believe in that. I believe that we need to, that's why it's important to train the trainer and the youths must start to engage. And the younger ones must start to engage. So if you are responsible for a task, you cannot do it, you get a CV or get a, a, a company that can recruit and get the best hands to do it. All right. give six months. All right, Mr. Daddy. As we wrap up the conversation, uh, let me just ask this question, you know, direct. Uh, is subsidy back in Nigeria? That is very, very ambiguous. That's why I said to you that we are not clear with what an MC is saying. We need to sit them down, invite them to a program like this, and let the GMB come to tell to us. We don't need the Fox media person. We need the person that we put there as a GMD, Mele Kayari. Sit down and tell us, point blank, what is happening with NNPC. And you have people that can ask questions straight at him when the camera is at him, so we can see what exactly is happening. You cannot hide at this point in time and start to give us with all those issues. We need to know the facts of the situation. This is another mandate. Business is being hurt every day by this. 
People cannot calculate, you cannot do budgets anymore in Nigeria because of the fluctuation of the, of the PMS and the foreign exchange. Thank God this, the, the foreign exchange is, has become stable in another one. I was expecting that they would say because of the stability of one month ago, 1,500 to 1,600, now we have a better protection. But here we are now saying that you have not been able to pay what has happened to all the money that you said you made us profit. He has to explain to us. Because this is now, you said dividend. As a dividend, as a shareholder, as a patriotic Nigerian, I must be able to ask him what has happened to our money. All right, Mr. Why are you telling us you have not paid? So if you cannot give me a terrible answer, then the president must tell him to go. All right, Mr. Just to be cheap. Yes. I must sincerely appreciate you for joining us on the program today and sharing your perspective with us. I've been speaking with Saheed Ajadi, an economist and policy analyst. Thank you so much for talking to us on the program. It is, man. Thank you very much. And that's our program today. Thank you for being a part of it. Watch a repeat broadcast at midnight and at 6 a.m. I am Abosedi Adeni Waderemi.